Holly and Sean from Solution Street. Uh, we're going to be talking about um, building new houses, uh, particularly in the first home buyers market um, and in the Auckland area. So uh, this is quite a really, um, well, really exciting kind of uh, thing to be talking about because first home buyers often struggle to find properties that they want. So uh, welcome, guys. Thanks for dialing in. Thanks for having us. Cheers. Hey, so tell us a little bit about um, Solution Street and what you guys sort of do. So at, at Solution Street, we're really a, a first home buyer focused development company. And so we, we really try to get, you know, those first home buyers into, into a place of their own and really um, make it as least of a hassle as possible. Yeah. Yeah. So, so first home buyers are your key targets and, and that's through your pricing, isn't it? That's, that's where you price your houses. Yes, sir. So in Auckland, we're aware that it's pretty hard to find, um, find a house under that $650,000 price cap. And so that's really where we try and benchmark the, the pricing for our homes. Um, obviously some areas are a bit more priced than others, but we really do target that kind of that price cap area. Because the, the view is that if you're paying six fifty for a house, you're probably teetering on the edge of, you know, Waiuku, <laughs> right? Like, like you're balancing on the border there. Is that have you got places that aren't, uh, you know, right on that border? Um, that's not good news. Um, now look, we don't <laughs> well, I, will I, will I you? <laughs> yeah, and 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 the years to come, we do. Look, we are looking at getting a little bit outside of Auckland um, to provide some even cheaper land options. Um, but the, the the cost of land in Auckland is just that high that for the for us to be able to do these developments, unfortunately, yeah, this above six fifty is kind of the cheapest we can get at the moment. Mm. But you've done ones in Ellerslie for like quite a reasonable price for that area, right, Mike? We had someone LZ that we all just sold, and they were at that kind of seven fifty to seven nine nine price point. Amazing, eh? That yeah, that, that for, first time buyers can get into that area with a seven in front of it is um is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So all all turnkey builds. Um, a lot of people don't kind of well a lot of first time buyers don't always understand what the turnkey builds are, and it, um you know they think they're going to have to put in a whole lot of effort into into the building. Just tell us a bit about the sort of the process. Um, that, that a first-time buyer would go through and, and what they'd end up with? Yeah, look, you might have seen in the news a while ago, there was some um, Kiwi build developments, um, some people that did with the Kayanga Aura Home Start grant, and the people went in to move into their houses and they had to find out that the landscaping wasn't done, they had to have driveways done and that type of thing, and all of that was done really to, to get around the rules. Um, we're taking it in the other direction entirely. We, we like to think that when people move into a house, they arrange their furniture delivery and they do nothing else. We leave the hot water cylinder on. We make sure that the lights are all working just before they move in. Everything's good to go. Um, bring the sheets in. You can sleep in on the, on the night that you settle. You're um, you're ready to go. So it, it's when it, the the word turnkey is literally you turn your key and you walk in your door and you're you're on your brand new house. It's, it's uh, pretty cool. Yeah, I mean a lot of the progress payments I've had a deal through here. The progress payments didn't include the driveway and. It's just a nightmare, eh? Because they're, yeah, they're maxed and then, out. And and... It's the little things like arranging your lawn when you get there. Um, you, you, some people don't think about that, but that's actually a major thing that your lawn's there. It's been planted. It's ready to grow. Your fruit tree, depending on the season, might even have some lemons on it if you're lucky. You know, we, we really try to endeavor. We, um, we often leave people a little gift so that when they move into the house on the first day, you know, they've got a little snack, snack to eat to help them with the moving. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a busy day that first day, eh? Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, so... Th they they can have a look at your plans. I mean, you, you're really uh, competitively priced for those first home buyers. How flexible is the, are those plans that that you work with? Yeah, look, we don't offer any flexibility with our plans, um, and that's simply that for us to be able to deliver these houses at this affordable price point, um, there's too much admin and too many other costs involved with allowing changes in it. So we're we're very strict on that, um, but. That doesn't mean that when you own your own house, you can repaint it whatever color you want inside. That's fine. If you want to put down pink carpet, that's fine. Um, <laughs> you only get one choice with us. Um, but we've we've chosen the colors very well. Um, we're very proud of it. It's a continually evolving product. Um, and yeah, we're we're pretty pleased with what you get. Yeah. Well, that's that is the Model T Ford model, right? Like any color you like, as long as it's black. But... Look, one of our taglines um, is relentless repeatability. Um, mm -hmm. We've just got to keep it going. And, you know, we're, we're pumping out a lot of houses at the moment just on the basis of that. If we were to spend all that time changing all these colors and materials and specifications, um, A, it will just slow down the entire process, but B, we'd need more people to help us with that. And therefore, the cost of the housing would go up. So it just yep. doesn't work out for our model. 
So I want to move on from there because, um, well, it kind of relates actually in terms of the home star rating because um, making things cost effective because of efficiency is good, but cutting back on quality <laughs> obviously isn't. So tell us, can you tell us a little bit about the home star rating? Um, because I don't think even I'm across the whole thing and just sort of where you guys sit. Yeah, I mean, it's funny, I, we talk about the affordable and how we're driving the prices down, but the home star rating costs us more money. Um, we spend substantial amounts of money on doing this, but that's part of our ethos about providing long, long-term long houses that are warm and dry and quiet and efficient. So whilst we're putting in extra insulation and we're putting in a special things like electrical run-on timers for your, um, for your fans to ensure that the house is ventilated, um, we, we spend a lot of time in the background trying to make this work. And as I said, it gives you a warm, dry house, but also gives you an efficient house long-term um, when you're using less water you don't, you don't, you not only pay for less water usage, obviously, but your water care rates go down for your sewer as well, because it's, it's charged on the amount of water you use. Um, we put LED light fixtures wherever we can. Um, everything we use, we try and, and use the most efficient possible products possible, as well as using products that are actually good for you. We don't allow any products, and this is under the Homestar rating tool, that have any baddies in them. Um, no formaldehyde or asbestos containing products or anything like that. All of our carpets, all of our floorings, all of our weatherboards, um, our paints, um, they've all got an environmental tick next to them, which just encompasses this whole thing in the green and the home star uh, rating tool from the Green Building Council. It's a big thing because um, a lot of a lot of the families moving in will have kids, right? So um, you want to make sure they're not breathing in Absolutely. nasty stuff. And, you know, and we take it to the next level. We like to think we, um, we we remind people as much as possible, and we put it in the home user guide to ventilate your windows as much as possible. Because as we're building this really efficient house, you actually need to ventilate it more. It's so warm, and that you actually just need to make swap the air out because there is no external air leakage in it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, uh, the old houses are self-ventilating, aren't they? <laughs> they are. I, I personally have one, and, and I've never had uh, any moisture problems, but I can hear the wind whistle through this morning. Yeah, I grew up in Wellington, and so uh, all those houses are self-ventilating. With home star ratings, um, I've been involved with that since we started Solution Street, um, making sure that we uh, we exceeded them. Um, we've got a couple of home star seven ratings. Um We've got a home star rating, um, design rating on all of our properties we've done so far, um, as well as it actually, you know, there's efficiencies that we talked about um, earlier. The other thing that we need to talk about is, is that the, the discount that ANZ can offer on your rate. On your rate. Mm. I think that's a really valuable thing. Um, and then there's a few tricks of the trade that you'll have to speak to Sean, and Sean or Carol, our salespeople, about to get the real information on them. But there's some real wins around getting your home star rating that um, probably isn't advertised as much as it should be. Yeah, ANZ don't advertise that as well as they could. And I think it's because not a lot of developers meet the criteria for Homestar 6. So um, I, I think, you know, they would they'd probably find it wasted marketing material. But yeah, for, for you guys, that would certainly be the first place we would look to make sure they met that criteria um, to, to go to ANZ because um, they do get a substantial discount. And, and everyone gets discounts over 80%, you know, from the advertised price and things but it is, it is more than that. And that's, that's pretty cool, actually. And I think the other banks will start to move towards that. A lot of them are, you know, funding the, um, uh, the heat pumps for existing houses and funding the, you know, interest-free um, loans for insulation for existing houses. And so they are, they are aware that that is a hot topic at the moment. Uh, and I'd like to see them all really encourage that Homestar rating. Um, yeah. yeah. Actually, I mean, the, the, the way I see it is that it's, and the way I think the bank's starting to see it as well, it's, it's a health investment, mm. you know? And from a purely commercial commercial point of view, a healthier tenant's more likely to pay back their mortgage. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. They keep working, they're happy, they stay in their house longer, all of those things, right? Like it's, yeah. yeah. Am I right in thinking that you guys have a portal that clients can look at the houses um, along the way? You can catch... Uh, they, they can get photos of what the, the concrete being laid and things. Is that right? Um, so, yes, sir, that's correct. So we use an application called Builder Trends, which is a piece of software that's just really a really close link between us and our clients. Because, you know, we're very aware that, for example, with our Henderson homes, if you were to buy, purchase a house today, and then they were being delivered in late February, early March, it's a long time to not really know what's going on on site. And so if you, uh, for all our purchases, they get a login for the software 
And every few days, every week or so, the project manager uploads some photos of what's going on on site, how the construction process are going. It has a, um, a live schedule that gets updated, you know, uh, in, in real time with what's happening. Um, and so yeah, it just really keeps everyone in the loop, the clients, and what we can keep them updated with what's going on. And then, you know, right from purchase through to settlement, through to turn your key in your way. Yeah. Mm. And then and then it's it's a great after sales product too. Um, we upload our home user guide to that. And that's about maintaining that healthy home that we talked about. Um, it's got remind it's got where all your warranties go. So instead of emailing us or trying to find all the stuff, it's always in one place and that's always yours. Um, if you were to go sell the house, um, you can pass that information on to the next person too. And it's just about keeping it all in one tidy place. And as Sean said, you know, keeping a really close communication between us and our clients. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and like uh, obviously it's different for every spot, but what's the sort of, like if I was found, a, found one of your houses I really loved, what's the sort of waiting time that's going to be? Um, yeah, look, um, give, you can give a range so you're yeah, not tied into it. Depends on the size of the property, of course, the location of it, which build method um, we use. We can talk about that if you want in a minute. But look, in general terms, from when we break ground on site, um, you're looking at six months to 12 months for a move-in. Mm. Now, depending on when we release the property to the market or when uh, you sign your sale and purchase agreement, I'd say as an average of eight to 12 months, somewhere around there is when you'd be looking to move into your first home. Again, yeah. depending on the size of the site, uh, the location, and some other factors. But I'm really glad to hear you say that because um, uh, you may or may not know, but the finance um, pre-approvals for builds last for 12 months, right? So, and that's difficult for the the guys building apartments and things that that it can take two years, right? And so, if you can keep it under 12 months, that's that's really good for the the first home buyers. Yeah. And again, that goes back to that standardization that we, that we won't move away from is that, um, I mean, I've built lots of um, design and build houses before and you get to, you know, the fact the frames get stood up and you take the purchaser through the site and they say, Oh, actually, can we move that wall over there? And you go, Oh, yeah. sure. If you're paying for it, that's fine. But every time you do that, it ticks that time on and time on and time on. And then all of a sudden at the end of the project, they say, Oh, I thought it was going to be done in six months. Well, we couldn't because you wanted to change the whole house. Mm. So yeah, and we, you know, and as we've as we standardize also, we are actually getting quicker at building too. So our builders and all of our stakeholders through the through the build time frame, they we're not changing anything. So they know that the light switch goes there. They know that that PowerPoint goes there or that the toilet goes there. There's no calling the project manager and saying where does that go? And all of these things add to the efficiency that you just you don't get when you're doing a design and build and that yep. we can achieve by not making any changes. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about the uh, the build methods then, uh, as soon as you mentioned it. What's uh, yeah. us about that? Well, um, so when, when we started Solution Street about three years ago, um, it was on the back of uh, needing a paradigm shift, we thought, in the market. Um, we thought that modular might have been the go. Um, we still think it might be. Um, but for us right this minute, we're, we're moving back to a traditional method of building. Um, we can see a bit more scalability and... We don't think that the benefits in the modular game have been appreciated enough by council, for example, who aren't giving it enough time and effort. And and we kind of understand why they're just taking their time to get it right to reduce their risks. The last thing any of us want is a leaky building crisis mm. and they're signing those things off. Um, so we understand that, but for us right now, and as we're scaling up and, and moving rapidly, we've, we've teamed up some, with some other key building partners that we believe can provide us um, with quicker uh, a quicker delivery of these developments over the next couple of years um yeah we had our fun with modular and it's it's a it's a really exciting beast and and next week we've got five houses being delivered to site um with a, another eight on that same development being delivered the week before christmas which is going to be exciting and a busy time for all but um we're looking forward to having those 13 houses all installed um you know, it's 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 not the end of the world for the modular with us. Uh, we just need a bit of a just a bit of a segue for it for the minute, and then when when things can change a little bit with external influences, we look to get to get back into the to the game. Yeah, I mean, f from a finance point of view, the banks never got their head around modular that because the the factories, so they're built in the factories, the factories won't release them until they're paid for, which is absolutely reasonable. Mm. But the bank won't release the money until they're on the site because there's no value to them until it's on the site and so there was this limbo and uh i mean that that doesn't affect you guys because you you are funding that yeah. um yourselves not the not the client but it was a shame because i think modular had its yeah had its potential 
You're exactly right there. We we had our way around it because, as you said, we have finance and we we we, we dictate our terms. But when it was a design build type modular, if that makes sense, um, you know, there could be one of ten different people's houses in that factory. And if something happened to that company, the bank has no rights to get to that, right? But mm. with us, because it was only our houses in that factory, the bank there's no there's a, there's perfect line of sight of, of what we what is ours. Yep. So yeah, it's um, it's as you said, it's a shame that we, that a few of those companies couldn't get it quite right. Um, but there are some other people in the game that will get it right. Um, and uh, and I, and some of them, some of the guys that we're actually working with, they're getting it right still. Just um, yeah, slightly separate to us. So yeah, yeah, it's exciting times, and, and it will come back. It has to. Um, and on a day like today in Auckland, um, it would be really nice to be working in a factory. Yeah, <laughs> rather than outside. Way. Yeah, we've got it here in Tauranga too. Yeah. Hey, um, so one of the things that a lot of first-time buyers are nervous about because they've heard stories about the early 2000s is that deposit. Um, so, Sean, why don't you talk about sort of what happens with the deposit and uh, and how they're protected? Yes, sir. So, I mean, as as everyone in the kind of market knows, there's a lot of horror stories going around. They're still going around about um, you pay a deposit for an offer plans property, the deposit gets used to fund a future project, develop falls over absolutely fair enough you know it, it, it's it's the largest capital investment that most of our purchases have made to date and so it's an absolutely fair enough thing to be worried about so with our process you know you go through the sale and purchase agreement all, all that process then your deposits due and so that sits with our, our lawyer and a third-party trust account so basically we, we don't see that money until settlement what it does is it sits in that lawyer's trust account it ticks over it accrues a bit of interest in there while it's there as well and then we build the homes and then at settlement, the money gets released, everything changes over. And then that deposit with the interest that's accrued gets put onto settlement. So the clients keep that interest that's made as well. Made as well. And so yeah, like I mentioned earlier with the kind of builder trend and things like that, it's really just peace of mind, things that we build into our overall process that um, yeah, we just wanna one, look after our clients as best we can, but also yeah, just, just make sure that things go as seamless as possible. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's some pretty strict rules around what you can do with the KiwiSaver deposit, and I suspect the majority of your clients are using KiwiSaver, and so yeah, it's um, it's really good that that those protections are in place now. I, eh? it's not the old old world. Um, mm. I don't know how much interest they'll be getting <laughs> these days, but the good news is that when they get a mortgage, they'll only be paying uh, two and a half percent, or probably. Yeah probably less by the time uh, the next round of houses come about but um yeah it's uh, that that is this world that we live in eh? yep. mm. um so um where are you looking to build next what are your sort of what's your next area that you're you're keen on you see are you seeing any growth in any areas like sort of out yep. out west or anything all of them um all, all of the places plaza, <laughs> yeah, growth and where we're looking to build i mean sean sure could speak to this but we're, we're selling out of our stock before it even hits the ground at the moment um we launched a site on the weekend of six houses in hillcrest and it sold out already so four days wow. and we sold out which is um pretty remarkable um but we are looking for sites in north south east and west Auckland at the moment we've got contracts on a number of them and we're just working through our due diligence um some of them we know will go ahead um and we're just preparing the marketing and, and items for that um but yeah we've got lots on our radar um it's gonna be a very very busy 2021 mm. um but yeah in, in general terms the west and the north shore are probably our main focus points at the moment sean yeah i'd agree with that yeah and it's just that the popularity of those areas is phenomenal Mm, and mm. Just, you know we're, we're run off our feet we can't keep up like ollie says and uh, a lot of our sites we're not even they're not they're not reaching market you know okay. that we will put them out to, to clients who've expressed interest in the past and like ollie says that site over the weekend over four days later bang 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 bang, bang there's been no advertising you know yeah yeah so the so the key if, if you're a first-time buyer looking to buy today would just be to get onto your mailing list and and get in those when they first get released Absolutely. If it was me, I'd just say, just keep an eye, keep an eye on what's going out there. And that, you know, often does mean signing up to a database potentially, or just keep keeping a really close eye on websites, you know, see, see what, see what's coming up, see what the noise around is so that you're in there with, with the first shot basically, because mm. I, I tell you what, at the moment, we, we just can't keep up. Mm. Yeah. yeah I, how I many, think, how many houses do you think you'll do next year? 
Uh, well, we were going to be doing 100, but we've changed our plans. We're going to go we're going to push as hard as we're coming up, push as hard as we can. Look, Auckland's in desperate need. We've known this for a while, um, mm. and we've been so, sort of just taking it a bit easy, not taking it easy, but just gradually growing a bit and just making sure that we've got a few things into place, which we do now have in place. And look, we're just going to go really hard next year. Um, so watch the space. Uh, we're going to be talking a lot, Rupert. Um, but I would imagine that, yeah, you know, it's going to be well over 100 in the next year. Uh, we've yeah. already secured a, a vast chunk of that land. Of that yeah. property. That's great. Yeah, I mean, Auckland needs it. And I think there's a different world now in terms of the further out of Auckland, you know, people are working remotely um, <clears throat> a lot, right? And so they're not having to commute. They might commute three days a week. So living a bit further out and and paying those reasonable prices or those lower end prices, quite, quite reasonable these days, right? Absolutely. And um, the other thing I wanted to note, Rupert, is that, you know, when you add all these things together, that the cost of affording a house is actually a lot less than people think. And in many circumstances, when you add these little bits and bobs, these incremental amounts with the low interest rates at the moment, um, it's actually potentially cheaper than renting and you've got your own piece of property. So I think they need to get in touch with you, Rupert, for some advice on that stuff because you know, the, the time is nigh, right? It's, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> well, the easy way to calculate that is that most investment properties in Auckland get 3% return interest rates are two and a half percent and so and you're not even paying a hundred percent of the of the value of the house right so um if you've got somewhere like wellington and uh investment properties are generally five percent return um so you're probably paying about half what you're paying in rent and um it, it's just outstanding at the moment now we encourage our um clients to pay as much as we can as they can um so they might pretend that they're paying sort of five or six percent to protect them from you know future interest rate hikes but at the end of the day if they if they need to pay minimum amounts it's um it's a good time all right yeah absolutely yeah. And, then, and then the other thing that you know one of our fundamentals is that is that you're, you're in your own house you know you don't have that insecurity of the landlord wanting to kick you out or increase your rent whenever they well, not whenever they feel like it but you know like you know, that, that security of we're trying to improve people's lives through own home ownership. And I think that, you know, between us, we can really have a big push on that one. And you don't break into a cold sweat every time your one-year-old grabs a felt pen, right? And yeah. uh, if you're not renting. <laughs> and if you want to hang a mirror, a picture on the wall, go yeah. ahead. It's your house. Yeah. You can do what you want. Yeah. I think just, I think first home buyers just think that building is, is a confusing and stressful time and particularly turnkeys, you know, like you're given this plan. It's a, they're beautiful plans. You know, they're not just horrible square boxes that you're given these plans and you, you pay at the end. So you're not double paying rent and mortgage. It's a really great outcome for first home buyers. So now really, really appreciate you guys getting into that market. Eh? Yeah. Like it's not stressless. Nothing when you when you spend sure. you know over six hundred and fifty thousand dollars on a house, there's never going to be no stress. But you know what we try to do is make it as stressless as possible. Um, we try to com keep the communication up wherever we can. Um, you know we love to we we have, we organise a meet and greet with our purchasers um, prior to the, them moving into their house, just to create that community feel too. So when you move into the house, instead of six or twelve or twenty people moving in and not knowing each other, you've already met, you've shaken hands, often started a Facebook group or always started a Facebook group, it turns out. Um, and then, you know, you're communicating and you get that that community and that safety feel straight away on day one. Um, and then, you know, if you've got happy neighbours, you're much more likely to be happy yourself, as we all know. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Okay, thanks, guys. That was a really cool update on what you guys do. Um, so first time, guys, how do they get in touch with you? So probably best to reach out through us um, through our uh, website, www.solutionstreet.co.nz is probably the first point of call. And then um, every touch point you have in there, you know, you can reach us straight away or through our socials, Facebook, Instagram, you know, we're, we're, we're active on there. And um, just, yeah, look, look, like I mentioned earlier, keep, keep an eye on the websites, see what's coming up and um, all our details on there if you need to get in touch, we'll be happy as to help you out. Cool. Thanks. That's um, Sean and Ollie from Solution Street. Cheers. Thanks, Robert.